people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. India's daily caseload of coronavirus disease is witnessing a dip with each passing day. Though in the second wave of COVID-19, the virus not only spread quickly but also adversely affected people's health. Despite that the country has managed to control it in a short span and now consistent efforts are being made to ensure that it declines. Besides, the government has also made some changes in its vaccination policy wherein it has decided that from June 21, all adults will be vaccinated for free. We have a report. Either by imposing lockdowns or ramping up its vaccination drive, India has managed to control the second wave of COVID-19. While the country's daily positivity rate has declined to 4.66%, the national recovery rate too has grown further to touch 94.55%. As per the latest data, India's coronavirus cases have dipped below 100,000. This downturn has even led some states to ease restrictions on commercial activities to spur consumption. However, multiple states have extended lockdowns and have been reluctant to reopen. So, this is a good movement on the public. How is the public coming? The public is very low. And with social distancing, the people have put it on. We have put our sanitization and all the people have put it on. We 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 have put it on. With vaccine being a crucial weapon to defeat the raging pandemic, Indian Prime Minister has announced another shift in the country's vaccination policy. As per the earlier vaccine policy, half of all the vaccines produced in India went to the federal government and rest went to state administration and private hospitals. But now, as per the new policy, federal government will buy 75% of all vaccines manufactured and the remaining 25% are still set aside for procurement by private hospitals as before. The state government will receive their vaccine doses for free from the federal government instead of negotiating directly with manufacturers. Today, कि राज्यों के पास वैक्सीनेशन से जुड़ा जो 25 प्रतिशत काम था उसकी जिम्मेदारी भी भारत सरकार उठाएगी द न्यू पॉलिसी विल दस रिलीव द स्टेट अथॉरिटीज ऑफ परचेजिंग डोजेस फ्रॉम द मैन्युफैक्चरर्स एट हायर प्राइसेस Moreover, it will also let the federal government to allocate vaccine doses to them on the basis of the population of those states, the level of disease, vaccination progress and vaccine shortage. Besides, the Prime Minister has announced that all adults in India will now get free vaccines. 21 June Somvar se, Desh ke har raj mein, 18 वर्ष से ऊपर की उम्र के सभी नागरिकों के लिए भारत सरकार राज्यों को मुफ्त वैक्सीन मुहैया कराएगी इंडिया हैज बीन इनोक्यूलेटिंग इट्स पीपल विद द एस्ट्राजेनेका वैक्सीन प्रोड्यूस लोकली बाय द सीरम इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंडिया एंड को वैक्सीन मेड बाय लोकल फर्म भारत बायोटेक it will commercially launch Russia's Sputnik V shots by mid-June. Ever since Pakistan came to existence, Sindhis have been subjected to all forms of cruelty and discrimination. Whether it is about taking away their rights or jeopardizing their identity, Pakistan has ensured that Sindhis are treated unfairly. And land grabbing to materialize Islamabad's projects is the latest design to inflict another form of brutality. 
A 46,000 acre Behria town suburb built against the will of locals has been at the heart of latest eruption of anti-government Sindhi anger. Protests are being held in Pakistan and in other countries demanding justice. While Sindhi Congress held a protest opposite Downing Street in London against land grabbing in Pakistan's Sindh province by the Pakistani army and its proxies, particularly the illegal occupation of Baharia town in Karachi. The rally was attended by Sindhi and Baloch activists from around the United Kingdom. The speakers at the protest said the Baharia town spanning 46,000 acres is one of the most valuable lands of indigenous Sindhi people and it has been occupied by force and deceit and with the support of the Pakistani state. Additionally, the army has snatched hundreds of thousands of acres of agricultural lands. Baharia town or occupation of any land all issues, coastal land issues, the jobs, the illegal immigration, all of these are symptoms. We got to get to find the root cause of this issue. The root cause is the Pakistan establishment hates Sindhis. Though the Supreme Court found the acquisition of land by Baharia town illegal, an implementation bench fined Baharia town 3 billion US dollar and legalized it. As a result, police and other agencies have forced people to leave villages. The authorities are said to be intimidating and implicating in false cases those who refuse to leave. According to the protesters, the Pakistani state has clear designs to convert Sindhis into a minority in their historical homeland and the only way forward for the survival of the Sindhi people is the united struggle against unprecedented tyranny. We are protesting here today in the atmosphere of the, one of the darkest nights of um, Sindh and Sindhi people. I can see, as a scientist, based on the research, that in the current world, Sindh is experiencing the fastest occupation. Baria town is just one example. Earlier, a peaceful demonstration had turned violent in front of the suburb's gate. People who have been affected most by the illegal land grabbing set the infrastructure on fire. Sindhis say Pakistani state and its army want to gulp all resources of Sindhis people. Gas, oil, coal, water, island, coastal lands and jobs. Sindhi people are witnessing the first colonial occupation in their thousands of years of history. Pakistan's MQM, Mutahida Qaumi Movement founder Altaf Hussain has said that Baharia Town and Defence Housing Authority are new tactical steps of the Pakistan military to occupy Sindh's land and for that purpose, locals are forced to quit possessions of the land they have had for centuries. अब जहां जहां पंजाब की हुकूमत फौज ने जमीनों पे कब्जा किया हुआ है एक एक जमीन अब इंशाल्लाह सिर्फ सिंधी बोलने वाले नहीं उर्दू बोलने वाले और सिंधी बोलने वाले मिलकर सिंध से इस तमाम कब्जे को छुड़ाकर Reports have suggested indigenous farming communities have been coerced into surrendering lands for the town spanning around 46,000 acres. And today it is just a piece of land. Tomorrow, the state might capture the entire territory. Moving on. Sri Lanka will be holding an investigation into what has been defined as one of the biggest catastrophes in the country's history. A thorough probe will look into possible oil spill off the already sunk ship MV Express Pearl. Suspicions of an oil leak were raised after a foreign news channel citing satellite images reported that there was a suspected oil patch around the ship.
Sri Lanka has announced an investigation into possible oil slick resulting from the submergence of a container ship MV Express Pearl. The investigation will focus on an oil patch of about 0.35 square kilometer located off the island nation's western coast where container ship is submerged. The container ship went underwater after burning for 13 days. According to Colombo Page, suspicions of an oil leak have been raised after Sky News citing satellite images reported that there was a suspected oil patch around the ship. Coast Conservation Minister Nalaka Godaheva said local experts were asked to examine an oil patch of about 0.35 square kilometers where MV Express Pearl ran aground earlier this month. Godaheva said five vessels, including two Indian Coast Guard ships equipped to deal with oil spills, were anchored around the sinking vessels, but none reported a leakage from the submerged wreck. <laughs> The express feeders operators of the container ship Express Pearl confirmed that the situation on scene remains under observation with no signs of debris and no confirmed reports of fuel oil pollution. Tons of microplastic granules from the ships formed on 80 km stretch of beach declared off-limits for residents. Fishing in the area has been banned. The government said it has already commenced investigations in this regard, as instructed by the president, adding the damage to the environment caused by the burning of container ship will last for another 20 years. Earlier, however, a Sri Lankan court told the government that it had no jurisdiction to make a ruling against 15 suspects in a case involving a sunken cargo ship and the case needed to be taken to a higher court as authorities continued to monitor the stricken vessel for a possible oil spill. The court order is that the, this court does not have power to issue notices on my clients. That is the, the second and third suspects and his client the first suspect. Court does not have power because already the prosecution have, they have made first, second and third persons have, has, as accused, right? Not a suspect as accused. To, to make them accused, we have to complete the investigation. So we raise that legal issue. The suspects include the captain, the chief engineer and the deputy chief engineer. The Sri Lankan government is accusing them of environmental damage after their MV Express Pearl container ship caught fire off the Colombo port on May 20. The Singapore registered vessel carrying 1,486 containers, including 25 tons of nitric acid along with other chemicals and cosmetics, was anchored off Sri Lanka's west coast when the fire erupted. And now in our section of Asia this week, the stories from across the continent that made news this week. Without specifying a date, Israel Parliament Speaker Yarev Levin has said that a vote in country's legislature on approving new government will be held soon. Naftali Bennett, the nationalist politician who would replace Israel's longest-serving leader called on Netanyahu on Sunday to let go and drop any efforts to encourage defections from the new coalition that could scupper its inauguration. Bennett had urged Neset Speaker Yarev Levin not to delay and to hold the confidence on Wednesday so that the government of left-wing, rightist, centrist and Arab parties could be sworn in. In a formal announcement to Parliament, Levin noted that opposition leader Yair Lapid had informed him and Israel's president that a coalition had been agreed and said that under a time frame set by law, a vote to approve it would be held by June 14. If the Lapid-Bennett government fails to win a majority in parliament, Israel will likely head to its fifth election in less than two years after an inconclusive ballot on March 23 capped by their coalition government. Shibuya town in Tokyo is the young fashion center in the capital. 
It has the latest trends in Tokyo and it is visited by many young people. Many places in this town are famous among foreigners. But maybe the most famous attraction is this traffic intersection. It is called Shibuya Crossing. It is just outside the main exit of Shibuya Station. There are three pedestrian crossing signposts on the scramble walkway. At one scramble intersection, many people randomly walk across in all directions, but they don't get in the way of each other. Today, it is known all over the world as a cityscape that symbolizes the Japanese people. It was first built in 1973。スクランブルになってからは車を全て止めて人だけが渡る。人だけが渡るサイクルは一度しかありませんので、いろんな方向に好きなように渡れるというルールができました。それぞれの方向に渡るのにぶつからないで渡れるっていうのがまず不
currently undergoing psychotherapy sessions being held by an NGO and the government. They are trying to overcome the trauma they suffered after a massive bomb went off outside their school gate in the capital. While recounting the horror, one such girl, Fatima Nouri, who survived the attack narrowly said she was so terrified by the attack that she couldn't even utter anything in the immediate aftermath of the incident. وقتی اینجا آمدیم چند روز تیر شد بالاخره نتیجهش هم بهتر بود یعنی مثلا ما میتونستم را بروم گبم راحت زده میتونستم Lighting candles in remembrance and meditation is what they are regularly involved in to attain peace of mind The sessions are not compulsory, but each participating student must complete at least five of the three-hour-long sessions. As we can have a more skin, no better than Ranja for the Shondra, dark book on Sharoy to the Shondra, dark book on a key, a handily at the four buffta, but you know, a sauce. گرفتن حمایت روانی و درک شدن را داشته باشن و کم کم در واقع اینا بتانن از این سوک عبور کنن و در این سوک در واقع نمانن Girl education has always been the target of the extremists in the country whether it is the Taliban or the ISIS terrorists who have been making both territorial and ideological gains in the country none wants to see women progressing According to USAID, more than 3.5 million girls are now enrolled in school in Afghanistan compared to none during the Taliban era. But an estimated 3.7 million children remain out of school, 60% of them girls, according to UNICEF. And they have been compelled further by the United States and many other Western nations' claim of girls' education as one of the key successes of years of foreign presence in Afghanistan. <laughs> Fatima Nouri on the other side says that such attacks cannot suppress the morale of Afghan girls and they will continue to pursue education and excellence of all forms. از این نمی ترسم که دوباره مثلا مکتب بیایم این فجار شد بلا ما قوی تر از قبل می خواهیم در مکتب آمده و درس های خود ادامه بتوم و راه کسایی که شهید شده را ادامه بتوم کتابچه خالی اونا را ما پر کنیم و ما بسیار زیاد پشتی سنف ما پشتی امسنفی های ما زیاد دیخ شدیم و هر چیز زودتر مکتب ما آقا شده که تا همسنفی های خود را ببینیم و به درس های خود ادامه بتیم The future, however, doesn't appear secure as foreign forces prepare to leave later this year. Some fear that it will embolden the terrorist groups. Students, however, seem to have come to terms with the regular attacks and a permanent atmosphere of violence in the country. They say they are going there anyway. با پانتون را پیدا کنم و رشته تیب میخوایم بخوانم و دوینده یک دکتر خوب شوم تا بتوانم نیروهای امنیتی ما که در خارج از مرز از ما مردم دفاع میکنه و زخمی میشن اونا را ما تداوی بکنم. During the Taliban's hardline rule from 1996 until their ouster in 2001, girls were blocked from school. Nearly all women had to quit work, their movement was restricted and a strict dress code enforced. Promising women emancipation this time, they have denied any responsibility and have condemned the school bloodshed. Afghan girls have shown through their talent that they are not any less than Afghan men. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. 
See you next week. Goodbye and take care. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.